Hi, I'm Eddie and I'm a master plumber. So today we're going to show you how to drain your water heater. So the big question is why would you want to drain your water heater? Well, the manufacturer usually recommends every 12 months you drain it and the reason being is because when the water goes in there's minerals in the water and it's very it varies depending on the area some areas have very hard water which is like a presence of magnesium calcium limestone whatnot and so when the water goes in here it actually will separate those minerals from the water and it'll collect at the bottom and that's what we call sediment and so that sediment is very corrosive it's going to eat away the tank um, these tanks are usually glass lined but still it's going to wear through it eventually and that's what causes you know the water heaters to leak whether it's a major leak a minor leak but when the tank is compromised there's no nothing you can do other than replace the whole system the whole water heater with all the components on it. We only recommend that you do the drain of the water heater if it's a newer one every year and kind of keep up with that. If you have an older unit in your house you know six years or older a lot of the time that sediment has already built up and compacted and you could, you know, try to drain it out, but for all practical purposes, you're only going to get a little bit of that um, sediment out. You could actually have like a five-gallon bucket full of sediment by then that's just compacted at the bottom of the heater. And it can be really difficult to actually get all that out. So what I'm saying is your efforts might be kind of wasted if it's older and you haven't really maintained your system. Okay, let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is shut the water off. The shutoff valve will be on the right side, that's the cold side, above the heater. And so for this we have a new ball valve, real easy to use. Sometimes you have the wheel ones, you got to turn it a few turns until it stops. So here the water is now off. Um, and then we're going to want to head, we're going to go ahead and shut the gas off. So here's the gas valve. We're going to go ahead and shut that off. Very important. Now what we're going to do is um, we need to open up a hot faucet. It, it gets airlocked. So if you don't have a faucet open, what'll happen is, is you're not actually going to get, the water's going to get stuck in there. It's like a straw. If you put in a cup, put your thumb over it, you need to have air to let it come out. All right. So I'm going to open up a hot faucet here. Here's a faucet. Any faucet doesn't matter. We're going to just turn the hot side on and there's pressure on that because there's an expansion tank on the water heater. That's going to go ahead and die down and we'll just leave it like that. The bottom of the water here, this is a brass drain, which is nice. Sometimes they're plastic, and if they are, you just want to be really careful um, when turning them on and off. So we're going to go ahead and hook our hose to it. Just any old garden hose? Yep. Doesn't matter. I'm just snug it up with my hands. Good enough. And then make sure you put the end of the hose to a drain or outside. Here, conveniently, we have a floor drain right here, which is great. We're going to drain it into there. What we're going to do is turn it on. So this is a slotted one. So you have to have a flathead screwdriver to turn it on. So we're going to go ahead and you can hear it. Now the water is draining from the tank naturally by gravity. So it's just coming out the hose, no pressure behind it. One nice thing that you can do is this pipe, the inlet pipe actually extends down to the bottom of the heater. It's a dip tube. And so reason being, um, when you run a faucet, the cold water fills the bottom of the tank and you get hot water out your faucet. And so um, a lot of that sediment is, is built all around the bottom of this heater. And so this is actually nice. You put a little pressure behind it like this a few times. It actually helps stir up that sediment and hopefully most of it will flush out the hose. You can do this a few times like that. You can hear the hose running. It's kind of agitating everything in the bottom of the heater. And hopefully you get all the stuff out of it. Going through the manufacturer's instructions, instructions, they actually tell you to do this once a month. I'm not doing that. That's a lot of work. Another thing, if you're really concerned about longevity of your heater, um, you can have either you do it yourself or have a um, plumbing professional replace, they call it a sacrificial rod or anode rod. And that's actually a um, dimer magnesium. It can be aluminum, but it's a, um, it's a bar in there that actually is supposed to the minerals are supposed to attack that rather than the tank but as a professional contractor we just recommend people replace these every 10 to 12 years just get them out put new ones in this process takes about 10 to 20 minutes depending on your time um, but now we're all done so i've flushed it i let it drain out naturally so then i use this to kind of stir up the bottom of it and i feel comfortable i've gotten most of the stuff that's in there out 
All right, so now we're gonna turn it all back. First step is we need to go upstairs and shut that faucet off. Don't forget that, especially if you have a slow drain, that's bad. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the hose since we have the valve shut. Okay, that's good. So now that we have the drain shut off and the water's restored to the heater, the last step is to turn the gas. We're going to turn this valve on, just like that. Now we're going to have to light the pilot and then turn the burner on. So let me show you with this gas valve how we do it. You're going to want to go ahead and flip this top knob to the pilot. And then the center dial, we're going to want to put that on pilot lighting. All right, now we're gonna have to remove this cover. So this one has a sealed burner chamber. Um, it has a little sight glass in there. And so this is where you're gonna see the pilot light. And so up here, what we're gonna do, the process is you're gonna wanna hold this down and this is a sparker, the igniter. So you're gonna wanna do that just like a grill. So you're gonna wanna look in here and see the spark until the pilot light, see the pilot light just lit. All right, now <clears throat> this dial, we're gonna have to hold that until the gas valve recognizes that there's a flame. It's a safety device, so we're gonna have to hold this down for maybe 30 to 60 seconds. Now that we've held it for about 30 seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and slowly lift up on this and watch the pilot light, and the pilot light has is is still lit, so we're good to go. We're gonna want to turn this top knob to on, and then this is gonna turn the burner on. Put this little cover back on, and you're good to go. And that's how you drain your water heater.